Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. Today we're gonna to be doing this 2013 Corvette Grand Sport Centennial Edition. We've already replaced his actual factory radio with a new Sony. It's an awesome, awesome head unit by far. And we're gonna be replacing some of his factory Bose speakers because they are, you know, almost a decade old. They're just not as clear as they used to be. They're probably deteriorating. So we're gonna take out the factory speakers and start replacing those with some really nice high-end aftermarket speakers. Stay tuned. Now we're on the passenger side here. First thing we're gonna do is up underneath here in this hole, there's a T30 Torx. So we have our T30 attachment here on the end of our drill. We're gonna shove that down in there and we're gonna take out that T30, T30 Torx out of here. And the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take our panel removal tool, we're gonna pop this out and there'll be a T30 behind this as well. All right, so we went ahead and got out of here and there's your T30 screw, bolt, whatever you wanna call it, that's out. So we got that one out, now we're gonna work on getting this one out. We take our plastic pry tool right here. Basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get in here and just try to get that button to come right out there, just like that. You don't take a whole lot of force and don't use anything metal, use a plastic pry tool or you're gonna mar up all the plastic around here. Now his is suede because it's Centennial Edition. You do not wanna tear up all this stuff. Don't use metal. Next step is we're gonna disconnect this piece here Basically how you do that is by pushing down on this tab right here and then that will release itself from out of here and then that's how that disconnects from there. And then inside that bad boy right back there is that T30 I was telling you about. Right there. Same bolt that came out from up inside there. Look down underneath this door panel underneath here. Right down there there's a slot basically right here you can get your butt right there. There's a slot right here. You can get your hands underneath there and you can start pulling out. And be careful, these have plastic tabs that run all the way around. I'll show you when I pull it out. But you gotta be super careful. You can't go jerking on it. You just wanna pull on it gradually. You can use your plastic pry tools to kind of help gracefully pull this out. Don't just jerk on it and break everything because they are fiberglass doors. We got everything popped. Basically, as you can see, this is super loose now. We had to take our plastic pry tool, pry it in and pull out. These are a nightmare to get out. So you're gonna be super careful when you when you do this because these are a pain in the butt to get out. Especially like this one's probably never been removed. So here's the back side of the door panel. So you can kind of see when you're taking it off, these are the studs that come out and they're all plastic. So be careful. Same way, these are plastic that go into these inserts. When you take the door panel off, you'll just want to unplug this, which basically means that you just basically pull this cantilever up and it releases the plug underneath. Um, here's your factory subwoofer. These are pretty much similar like CTSVs. A lot of the Corvettes, everybody uses, utilizes these subwoofers. They kind of are in different sizes though, so you have to watch it on different vehicles. See, we got one that didn't come. You got you to pull that out and put it into the door panel. Otherwise, you're going to have problems when it goes to fit in there and then you're going to slide it in there. And then these are the factory speakers right here. We're probably gonna have to make an adapter to get the new aftermarket speakers to fit in there for him. We're gonna go ahead and cut all this out of our ABS plastic to make our speaker adapters. Here's our adapters. I didn't do a very good job cutting these holes, I'm not gonna lie, but I made them by hand in jigsaw, so they're just basically made to adapt this onto here. So that's all they're used for. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. We are making this speaker there to adapt to this speaker there. So that's all they're being used for. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. We have our speaker onto our adapter, and then all we're gonna do, sorry about the ugly screws, 
and then we're gonna just slide that down into that slot right there and then boom we can just mount our four factory screws right onto there and it screws right onto the panel just like the other one does nothing crazy beautiful looking it just does its job and bolts it on there bolt it on now we're gonna use our speaker adapter to be able to bolt basically snap this in and then it will give us our two leads here to this that way everything's factory we're not messing any of this up So this piece right here is an adapter. We'll put a link down below in the description. You will plug it in right here to this plug. That was the back, basically the, where the speaker plugged into. So you're going to plug it right into there. And that's where the actual speaker used to plug into. So just remember that it's the same terminal. If you go over here to this, it's the same terminal right there. That's where the speaker used to plug in at. And then you're just gonna plug this right into there. And then these two terminals will go into your positive and negative right there. That's how it works. Very simple. And that way you don't have to cut anything. And you can unplug this if you ever want to put the stock speaker back in. Here's it all put in. We put a zip tie here to hold this down. But get your positive and negative on there. Everything should be good. And now we're ready to actually install it back on the car. We're going to first put Dynamat back on there. And then all we'll have to do is plug this in and then snap all the pieces back onto the car. This is before the dynamat. We're gonna be putting dynamat just on these spots right here. Don't need to put it on there, it's all plastic. It'll help a little bit. It's fiberglass, it's not as bad as metal, but it will help a little bit. Dynamat upper. driver's side before it's gonna be a little bit different than the passenger side main difference is we're gonna pull this out with our plastic pry tool so we're gonna take our plastic pry tool and we're just gonna get in there and pull it out and then we're gonna take our plastic pry tool behind it's hard to see right here and then we're gonna pop this out and then once that pops out we'll have our torques behind their t30s you just pop this out with that plastic pry tool right there and just kind of just ease your way in don't use anything metal it looks like if you look at the top of this all these nicks somebody's already hit this probably with rings i would say rings you know things like that the keys you know hitting that and it messes up that metal but you do not want to use anything metal on metal because that will mess up the aluminum so be careful use plastic only and basically you're going to unplug it by pushing down on this part right here and then when you push down on that part this plug will just come right out just like that very simple plastic pry tool down here basically just get it up in there underneath and then you'll just pry it out and then there's the back side of that I don't know why this thing has such a hard time focusing it drives me nuts there you go there's the back side of that and then in there magically you have two t30s and in here I believe there's one too but I could be wrong it may just be those two t30s but I just went ahead and take that out anyways because you have to unplug it Leave the two are just down there not in here but you still have to unplug this take it out um, we're gonna start going underneath here there's our indentation right here there's a little indentation right there we're gonna start pulling out and these are a pain in the ass to pull out if they've never been off which is probably this one hasn't so we're gonna start pulling those off you do not want to jerk on it i would mainly rep you know do this and just pry them each one and pull out otherwise you're gonna break a bunch of stuff i would not recommend that back side of the door panel the way you're gonna get this off is you're just gonna move this cantilever system up like that and then this plug will remove itself and then the whole door panel will come off on this one we're gonna actually unplug this guy right here um, which is kind of hard sometimes on these but you want to pull this out 
That's the speaker plug right there. And then we're gonna remove these four screws and get the speaker out of here. This is our adapter here that we made. It's from the front side. And then this adapter will basically go where this notch is right here. So, sorry. Basically where this notch is right here and then it will just bolt in one, two, three, four. And we'll put our speaker harness piece under there and then plug into those two terminals. There's the speaker installed. We went ahead and ran our wires underneath, zip tied here, ran to this plug so this plug doesn't go everywhere. Zip tied it here. You want it stationary, you don't want it flopping around making rattling noises. So it's the worst thing I've ever found is when stuff starts moving around, pulling out, rattling noises, people complain about that kind of stuff. And obviously I would too. Here's our adapter, screwed on, four screws. Looks like OEM, that's how it should be. Extremely nice audio dynamic speakers. We do carry those. If you need those, look down in the description below. You can email us, we can get you those speakers as well.